Hello students, uh, in this lesson we are going to talk about igneous rocks. We have already studied what are they in, uh, in a definition maybe. What have we studied about igneous rocks? The word comes from ignis because these rocks are formed by the hot molten magma which looks like fire. When the magma cools down, these rocks are formed. So uh, let's know about some characteristics of igneous rocks. The first characteristic is how do they look? They can be, they are, okay, they can be fine grained, smooth and compact. Or they can be uh, large crystals with coarse surface. Coarse means not very smooth, okay, it has a lot of friction. If anything is on it, a lot of friction is created because of not smooth surface. Okay, crystals with coarse structure, you can say, call it coarse surface. Okay, so we know that there are two types of igneous rocks, right? Intrusive and extrusive. So the extrusive ones, which are formed by cooling of lava on the surface, they are fine grained. But the intrusive ones are large crystals having coarse surface, all right? Uh, okay, the second one is, uh, when you talk about uh, fossils, fossils are nothing but the dead remains of any living organism. In these rocks, there is no fossil. Why? Because these are made purely from cooling down of magma. Okay. And when you talk about sedimentary rocks, they are formed by having some dead remains of uh, aquatic animals in between their layers. Right. Uh, so that's why they have fossils, but they don't have. So ign igneous rocks. Okay. You can say these. Rocks do not have any fossil. Third, now most of the time in sedimentary rocks like you will find that a lot of water can go inside the rocks, okay, it can percolate. But when you talk about igneous rocks, this does not happen much. So water does not percolate much. It just runs along the cracks on the uh, rock. So percolates much. Now, so due to this, these igneous rocks are very hard and resistant to erosion. Erosion means the damage of rock when the rock is uh, broken down into small, small pieces because of different reason. But because water does not percolate inside much, it is less uh, prone to res erosion. You can say resistant towards erosion and they are hard. Now, when you talk about erosion, uh, there is something called chemical weathering. Where, the, uh, where any rock is broken down into small pieces or maybe damaged because of chemical reactions happening inside the rock, that's all because of water. When water percolates inside the minerals inside the rock, they react with water and there is chemical weathering happening. But because water does not percolate much in this case, igneous rocks are less prone to chemical weathering, but they can, they are very much subjected to mechanical weathering. Mechanical weathering means when because of a lot of uh, temperature change on land, hot, cool, hot, cool, due to which the rocks, uh, you know, they compress, expand, they compress, expand, due to which they start breaking. So erosion starts happening. So uh, we can say that they, they are less affected by, they are less affected by chemical weathering but more affected mechanical weathering, mechanical weathering. Okay, so that's about the some characteristics of the igneous rocks. Let's talk about the different igneous rocks that we have around us. The first one is extrusive, the second one is intrusive. So let's talk about the definition of extrusive igneous rocks. Okay, uh, which rocks can be called extrusive, which are found on the surface of the earth because the lava when cools down on the surface, they form the extrusive rocks. So we can say uh, these are formed by rapid cooling, fast cooling of 
rapid cooling of hot molten magma on earth's surface okay a very common example of extrusive rocks are the basalt the basalt rocks okay these uh, the landforms that you see on the earth the lava plateau the lava sheets these landforms are formed by th this type of rock that's a basalt okay now uh, let's talk about the extrusive one sorry intrusive one we finish we're off with the extrusive we could talk about the intrusive rocks now okay uh, intrusive rocks are just the opposite of extrusive they are formed when magma cools beneath the earth's crust all right and that too slowly so they are called the extrusive rocks they are formed when magma cools slowly beneath the earth's crust so they are called the intrusive rocks so i hope you are clear with the two differences between extrusive and intrusive you will find many types of intrusive rocks they are called the bath batholiths laccoliths uh, various types of intrusive rocks so let's go ahead and learn them in detail now okay uh, before we go to the types of intrusive igneous rocks let's see from this structure what all we can understand so suppose this is the lava this is the molten magma not the lava which runs up to the earth's surface okay and this is the area below the earth's crust remember some area below the earth's crust has a lot of rocks okay in layers so these are the layers of rocks beneath the earth's crust and this is the magma which rises up now this hot molten magma sometimes what happens is beneath inside a lot of depth it cools down and it forms a large huge huge crystal dome shaped crystal and it cools down okay and there it hardens and forms this kind of rock which is called batholiths okay they are igneous rocks they are intrusive igneous rocks these are called batholiths because they are the deeper intrusions of this whole this uh, molten magma okay so this is the this is the batholith now sometimes uh, molten magma what happens when it rises up it goes into vertically the between the layers okay the cracks between the layers of the rocks which are there these rocks which are existing there below, uh, beneath the earth crust they are called the country rocks so there are cracks between them so when the magma runs upwards vertically between these cracks and cools down there it hardens there to form something called the dike so here this is the dike okay this these vertical things are dike they are also intrusive igneous rocks now uh, sometimes what happens is when magma is running upward it also runs horizontally between the layers of the rocks and gets hardened there so these horizontal intrusion of the magma is called the sill and sometimes when magma is getting horizontally between the layers of the existing rocks it forms a big dome shaped structure and it pushes this layer of rock upwards okay and it forms a dome shaped structure with a flat base this is now called the laccolith so such rocks when formed are called laccolith so this is the hot molten magma which has got between the layers of the existing rock and uplifted the rocks forming a dome shape such rocks uh, such magma when hardens cools and hardens form the laccolith this all these are also kind of intrusive igneous rocks now what we will do is we will write uh, the definition and some detail about each one of them on this side so what are batholiths batholiths are nothing but dome shaped but they don't have a base okay they don't have a floor so they are dome shaped deep intrusions of igneous rocks so they are deep intrusions that means the igneous rock has got hardened deep somewhere deep inside the earth okay so they are called the batholiths uh, second and what you need to know about batholiths is sometimes if they rise to the surface these rocks when they rise to the surface they form huge mountains and the cores of these mountains is nothing but the batholith okay uh, so bathos means deep inside that's why the name is batholith and a very common form of batholith is nothing but the granite so batholiths are mostly made up of granite let's talk about the second thing that we saw here is dike what is a dike 
I think in your, in your own words you can write this dike is nothing but when magma runs vertically upwards and fills the cracks and fissures in the layers of the existing rocks, it hardens there to form the dikes. Okay, so this is how we can write the definition. So dike is nothing but the magma when forced upwards fills the vertical cracks or fissures between the layers of existing rocks and hardens there to form dikes. So there, that's about the dike. Now let's come to what are sills. Sills are nothing but when magma horizontally fills the fills between the layers of the existing rocks and hardens there, it cause it is called a sill. So let's write down the definition of sill now. Sill is nothing but when magma flows horizontally between the layers of existing rocks, it hardens there to form sill, alright? Okay, now the next thing that we are going to talk about are the lacolates. Lacolates are nothing but a mass of igneous rock which is, which, is, which has a lens shaped, okay? Okay, it is formed when uh, magma fills the horizontal layer and uplifts the layer, alright? So that's the lacolate. So let's write down the da definition of lacolate now. So lacolate is nothing but a mass of igneous rock formed horizontally between the layers of the existing rocks causing uplift of the layer. Okay, that's called the lac lacolate. Okay, um, the other thing that we need to know here is the last thing is called the neck. Now what happens is, uh, you know what is a volcano? Volcano is nothing but when magma comes up to the surface, from a vent, it comes out on the surface. Okay, so that's the volcano. So now in that vent, sometimes what happens is along with the molten magma, some viscous magma also comes up. Okay, and that magma cools down there in the vent. So that's called the neck now. Okay, so neck is nothing but when magma cools down, In the passage of a volcano, it forms a neck. Okay, neck can also be seen as landforms on the earth's surface too. Okay, this neck when it comes out, okay, it cools down and forms some landform called the volcanic neck. So I hope you are clear with what is a neck, what are batholiths, dike, sill, lacolates. Okay, and we also and I hope you are also clear with what are in extrusive uh, igneous rocks. So this is all about the igneous rocks. Here we come to the end of our session.